Hey guys, today we're going to be unboxing a camera that I've been waiting for three and a half months. And I can't believe that it's been that long since I bought this thing and just now receiving it. But in any case, this is a pretty big upgrade for me. I am still on the A6000 series, which I have an A64 that's filming right now and a 65. So those are APS-C and this is going to be my first full frame camera. So I skipped the A7 III, even though I wanted to buy that, but I didn't want to change everything to the full frame because lenses are quite a bit more but I went ahead and went for this one because I feel like this camera here will last me for many years to come so the box is quite large and there's a lot of loose stuff in there honestly I don't understand why that's okay but yeah we just have a bunch of mumbo jumbo with all this amazing stats whatever of this camera and we're not gonna be talking about all that here I'm just gonna you know open this thing up and we're just going to just look at it and I'm just going to give you my opinion coming from APS-C that I've used for many years now. This is kind of interesting. Lots of booklets and really thick ones. Very weird in this digital world. So it looks like we got some kind of adapter here. Okay, so this is a HDMI adapter, it looks like. I guess this is to keep the connections more stable to the camera. That way they don't wobble around. And then we got a USB-C to regular USB-A cable. All right, so we do get a strap also. Pretty nice one, looks like. I normally don't use my strap, so I'm not even going to open it. So we got a few compartments. Let's go in the smaller compartment. All right, so we do get a charger. I think most Sony cameras don't come with a charger. But this one does, that's cool. It is pretty beefy, definitely feels quality. And this is the best way to charge it, or at least the fastest way is on this charger. So I probably will be using this. And underneath the charger, it's the power cable to it. All right, so we should have our camera in here somewhere. All right, and there it is. So in typical Sony fashion, they just put it in the little cover here. And here it is, wow. That is quite interesting. It's definitely still small, but very chunky. And I think this grip here has a lot to do with the girth of it. Feels good in the hand. It does feel somewhat lightweight, which is a good thing. Of course, I don't know if the battery's in there, is it? No, the battery's not even in there, so that's part of the reason, I guess. But yeah, it's the typical Sony camera feel, just a lot more chunky. And we have the swivel screen that's so new and desirable, I guess. And it does have a pretty nice feel to it, so it's, I think it's magnetic or... Oh no, there's a little clip here that it clips in. And the hinge does feel a little weak though. Doesn't give me a lot of confidence in the hinge there, but hopefully that's done well. This is Sony's first flip-out screen, and I don't know. Hopefully they got that part right. So we got a humongous viewfinder here. Some sensors, buttons. Very nice. So these things don't flop anymore. So well, that's a plus because every other camera I had to take these off but now I guess I can leave them on since they don't flop around. So we have doors looks like. All of our ports are behind these doors and there's quite a few of doors. So we got the multi port, the USB type C for charging, the headphones and the microphone. And then we got full size HDMI output so that's cool. I guess we should still have the battery somewhere. Okay there it is. So this is the FZ100, which is a much better battery compared to the older ones. I guess let's see if there's any juice in this thing. For some reason I'm thinking it'll probably be pretty dead, but let's see. So we got a toggle for the on and off. Oh, look at that. It has life. So we're going to choose our language, date and time. We're going to choose Hawaii, English, set the date. Oh yeah, the battery's dead. So yeah, it looks like it powers on and works, so that's good. And even with the battery just by itself like this, it's not very heavy. And that's quite impressive for how feature-packed this thing is. So I'm actually quite happy with the size because I was thinking that it was going to be much heavier and larger than this. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. I don't want to ruin my battery, so I'm going to go ahead and charge this thing all the way up. So let's grab this charger. The power cord is quite short. But yeah, I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to plug it in and let it charge all the way. Well, let's move some of this stuff out of the way here. So as our battery is charging, I want to talk about the lens that I bought for this camera. And the funny thing is I bought this lens shortly after I ordered the camera. So I've had this lens for over three months now. And I've been using it on the APS-C cameras. And it's definitely nice even on those cameras. Now one thing I did notice about this lens, and it is the 24mm 1.4 G mask. I was having a little bit of focus issue with the APS-C camera. So I'm hoping that's not going to be an issue with this thing here. But other than that, this lens is quite impressive. So we should see some pretty amazing results here. So let's pop this cover off here. Check out the sensor. 
So the sensor is exposed, as you guys can see there, and it is a full frame, which is quite large. And you guys can see here on the 24 1.4, we got a pretty large optics here also at the end. Now the great thing about this whole combination here is that it's all weather sealed. So with this together, we could really go out there and get it wet. But yeah, I think this pair here, at least for me, is going to be a good starter. I do need something probably with a little bit more range because the 24 is quite white. But for most of the things I do, the 24 is going to cover pretty much all of it. Now together, this is definitely quite a bit heavier than I'm used to. And just to compare, this is the 6500 here with the Sigma, what is this, 30 millimeter. So this is a great lens. It's quite impressive what this combination here could do. And if we compare it to this newer one, well, hold on. You guys can see how the APS-C is a little bit smaller. It's not a huge difference, actually. Less even, actually, than I thought. But even weight-wise, it's quite a bit also. You do get a lot more camera. Now, it is also, you know full frame versus APS-C, so that makes sense. But yeah, I'm really excited to go to full frame. This is definitely, I think, a exciting moment for me. And I'm glad I waited till the A7S III because I was really intrigued by the A7S II, but that was becoming kind of too old. The A7 III was definitely a great value. But again, I didn't want to do the whole lens rebuying because lenses are quite expensive and I have about four of them for this APS-C and quite nice ones. But now it looks like I'm slowly going to move over to the full frame and we'll see how it works out. Actually, one thing we haven't even looked at is this door here, I guess SD card door. And there's like a little tab that you got to pull down, I guess, to open it. Let's see which way does it go. Okay, it clicks out to the back. And then it just clicks in on its own. So yeah, we have two slots. This takes normal full-size SD cards and the new CF Express A cards from Sony. And I did not get those fancy cards because one, they're too expensive. And two, for what I'm going to use this camera for, I don't think they are required. Now I did buy some cards because I knew that the cards I have are probably not going to be good enough for this thing. So I got a couple of the pro grade SD cards and I didn't really know what to get to be honest so I didn't know exactly what I was going to use. I have quite a few V30 cards but I don't have anything you know larger than that so I got the V60 and 128 gigabytes and the V90 and only 64 so I'm hoping that that's going to be fine for me. You know, if I'm going to do some kind of slow motion in 124K, this should be good right here. And most likely I'm not going to do a lot of it. And check out those connections in the back. It's quite a bit different than a normal SD card. So let's see what this 128 looks like. So this is a V60 and it also has the extra connectors in the back. So, And I went ahead and bought Pro Grade because I heard that these were pretty high quality. I like to buy things once usually and enjoy them instead of having failures and needing to replace them. So let's go ahead... And stick them in here I guess so the cool part is is that since we have two slots most likely I can use the well let me stick the 128 on the top yeah because that's slot one and slot two is going to be the 64 so I'm guessing maybe I can set up in the camera to do all my slow motion 4k for to slot two and then for slot one I'll do the normal up to 60 frames per second whatever 4k 10 bit onto that card so that should give me enough room to work with so I've kind of lost patience of waiting for it to charge. <laughs> so it's only been like 10 minutes. Let's see what kind of battery we have. Okay, so we're starting over, interestingly enough. Okay, you got to cycle through it to get to PM. I don't know. I think it's around 7, whatever. Okay, I guess that's the app. Okay, so I guess it sees the uh, SD cards. There's a little red light that blinks over here. I guess preparing them or formatting them. But yeah, I'm pretty interested to see how the screen looks like. And yeah, right off the bat, it looks <laughs> really clean. So yeah, it looks pretty nice and crispy, actually. So we got 19% on the battery. Not very much, but let's see. Where's the menu here? So I'm completely unfamiliar with this layout. Okay, it's over here. All right, so that's something to get used to. So here we have our menu. And <laughs> you guys can see that we definitely have a new menu now. And not only does it look new, it's also now you can touch it and scroll around and things like that. So I think this is definitely the step in the right direction. And the screen is quite responsive. So we can obviously still use the rotator here to move around and navigate. But you guys can see everything looks pretty organized. And we do still have the favorites, which is my menu that you can add, you know, practically anything to this. So yeah, very cool. I think Sony is definitely doing everything right now with the menus and the flip out screen and giving us 10 bit. 
an option to do 4K, 120 frames per second. That's pretty impressive. So I'm gonna get to know the camera a little better and I'm gonna film a few things, maybe take a few pictures, which by the way, this, you know, obviously can take pictures too, but not really what this camera is intended for, but it doesn't mean, you know, you can't do it. And especially for social media and not like for pro stuff. What I do, this is probably more than enough. So I'm pretty excited to see how the video will look. And my opinion is gonna be completely comparing this to the 6000 series that I've been using for a while. So the battery's charging, but what's quite interesting is that if we look at the charger here, we can see that there's a little indicator here of three dots of like a battery, and it's on the first one. So it's actually showing us what the state of the battery is as it's charging. So that's pretty interesting attention to detail. So you can quickly glance at this and know about where the battery is as it's charging. And by the way, these are the parameters of the charger here in the back. And that's the model number there. All right guys, so here we are outdoors and it is quite bright. I am using the 24 millimeter 1.4 and we are in picture profile eight, which is the s Lock 3. The profile is modified very slightly, but pretty much this is what you get. And we are recording in HS 4K 24P. 422 10-bit, auto white balance, ISO at 160, and the lens is at F13 right now. We got auto focus on. So yeah, I'm gonna go around the house and kind of just shoot a few things here and there so you guys can see what that looks like. So here we have a little bit of a dynamic range test, I guess. So we're inside and it's darker here, but you know, sunny outside. And we can see the camera is handling it very well. So we got these large windows to look out of. Now I'm gonna back up a little more so you guys can see what you know we're dealing with. So we're you know having pretty good dynamic range, especially being in S Lock 3. Now I did have to step up the shutter speed to 125 because I was in the higher f stops so I want to be you know maximum around 10 and you guys can see the focus pulsing and this is actually an issue that I've noticed that the 24 millimeter here is just randomly hunting for focus a lot of the times so here we have a little more extreme situation which we got a dark corner here or a darker corner with you know bright sunlight outside and those rails outside that you see out the window are actually sunlit right now. So yeah, just looking at the monitor here, I'm quite impressive how well it's handling dynamic range so far. Here we have even more extreme situation. It's very bright outside and quite dark in here. So I'm very curious how, how well we can balance this shot. Maybe recovering some blocks and, you know, still keeping the highlights. All right, so here we have a very difficult shot because the sun is actually shining on the front of the window. So it's not just, you know, backlit on the back. It's literally shining to the front of the window. And, you know, this makes it extremely challenging because it's much brighter this way than if it was just lighted outside. And you guys can see we have pretty good dynamic range. Now I am overexposed right now. So we even bring less light, 5.6, 6.3, 7.1, F8, so this is probably about normal right here, maybe 7.1 here. I think we can recover enough in detail there, so. So it's on auto white balance right now. I'm gonna go down to, so this is 5K here, too warm, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43. So I'd probably start using it around this range like 39 to 4,000 Kelvin is a, a lot of what I use. I do like my temperature a little bit cooler than the usual. All right, so let's throw an APS-C lens on here. So I'm going to attempt to do this while we're recording. All right, so it didn't let me do it, but yeah, I got the Sigma 30 millimeter. But yeah, you guys can see the barrel around the edges. What's cool about Sony is they have the clear image zoom. So if we engage that and start zooming in, you guys can see we can zoom past the barrel just a bit there and this is a 1.2 times crop zoom here and all of a sudden here we are on APS-C so if you do have a few of those APS-C lenses you could use it and just and just crop it in camera with clear image zoom or post crop it I'm gonna zoom out here that way you know you have all your capabilities like touch focus and things like that so Obviously, that's not a great scenario, but we are losing a lot of the sensor, but this option is available. 
all right so we are outdoors right now and you guys can see that the autofocus is hunting around which i find a little strange for this camera so this lens might not be very good at out of focusing or at least you know keeping focus and sorry for all the sound also in the background a lot of leaf blowers and stuff like that happening right now but yeah here we have another situation that it's pretty dark here we're at the railings and then we got sunlight past that so it does look like it seems to have pretty good range controlling the darker to the brighter parts of the sea. So it's been quite a bit since I started the video of this camera and since I never got to finish my initial thoughts on this thing, I guess the good part is I can give you guys an update also. But let's go over really quick about the things that I like so far about this camera that's, you know, pretty intriguing, I guess. Doing mostly video, viewfinder here, I don't really use, but man, when I do use it, it's amazing. It's such a good viewfinder. It's so large and you can see so well through it. It's quite impressive. Yeah, it's kind of sad that this camera is mostly video orientated and has such a good viewfinder which almost doesn't make sense but yeah the viewfinder is amazing in this thing now i haven't really took any photos with this thing and when i did take photos they look pretty good obviously but when you do zoom in you know or cropped a lot you could kind of tell you know that it's not the resolution you wish it would be so yeah if you want to buy this thing for photos i wouldn't recommend this i'd look into other things that could probably do a better job for the price and as i mentioned earlier it's really cool that you can use aps-c lenses on here unfortunately the camera is not really native to them you have to either cropped with clear image zoom or in post so not so friendly with APS-C I would say even though you can use it but in photo mode it actually switches to APS-C which is nice but then again you know it degrades it that much more so yeah not so great for APS-C I would say now one thing that's pretty amazing about this camera is the buttons and the tactile feel everything feels really high quality all of the dials the buttons they all feel very nice they're very tactile and they give you pretty good feedback so compared to the like a6500 this is much you know nicer kind of feedback here on all of the buttons and dials now one thing that is not so great believe it or not is the 
flippy screen. Not that it, you know, can't flip or whatever. It obviously flips just fine and closes. But the part that I don't like about it, I didn't realize this right away, is that, let's see if I can show you guys. If you flip it out, it doesn't flip out completely. If you can maybe see this, it kind of doesn't come out all the way. So it's almost kind of a little bit closed like this. And so whenever you're filming, you're always on an angle. And so you can't never really get that flat look. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see how much it tilts down here. So yeah, that part I don't like, and it's actually quite annoying. And I do have to close it if I want to line up my shot, you know, really straight. It's not as helpful as I thought it would be, or at least for lining up the shot. But you know, if you're filming like this, it's just fine looking down at it. But yeah, just having it out like this seems to give me issues, but maybe just my case. But yeah, that's one of the things that I found not so great about the screen here. But the hinge has been fine and it feels pretty good and feels solid. Now, another thing that's quite disappointing is the combination of this 24 GM lens from Sony that's, you know, technically supposed to be pairing very good with the camera like this. But I really have some breathing issues with the focus and it's just confused for some reason. And it's not always, but, but it's still annoying and it happens quite often and doesn't feel Sony great I guess and I played around with different settings and different you know focus parameters and you know it pretty much does the same thing no matter what so in any case that's kind of was a little disappointing I'm sure other lenses are maybe better than this one here with focusing but you know it's not like a complete disappointment obviously it still does a great job it's just not what you would expect I guess out of a setup like this but on the bright side the preamps in this camera are definitely better than the APS-C cameras that I have so Sony has definitely put some high quality amps in here because it really sounds good at least to my ear through my editing and I've been mostly using the input audio obviously not the external audio even though that works pretty well too in this camera so the next part that is kind of an issue is, I don't know if you guys can see, but the battery door sticks out a little bit and it's got a kind of like a sharp edge right here. And it's kind of weird. You guys can see that right here. It's actually sticking out and it's closed all the way. So yeah, that part is kind of weird, honestly. I don't think it's supposed to be there. And it seems like I just got a, maybe a little bit of a defective door or something. In any case, it still works fine. Everything is fine with it. It's just kind of sticks out and it's sharp right here and catches on my finger and you know it's quite uncomfortable with that out of the way the slots have been working great both of them I've just been using my older SD cards and actually guys I should mention that I did return my other pro grade card because I realized I don't need it at all so the V60 here can handle pretty much everything up to 124k and the reason for that is because I'm recording everything in HS and the reason I'm recording in HS is because I have a newer computer that can edit that easily so I have smaller files and I can use the lower grade cards and even in my old cards here that I thought would not be compatible at all with this camera work actually just fine for 4k 60 and HS at 10 bit with no issues whatsoever so yeah I've been using my old cards and it's not a big deal at all so most of the things I record in let's say 24p or 30 I'll use these cards and then if I have to do slow motion I'll just use this card just to make sure I get you know a quality rate and not have a chance of like corrupting or messing up so yeah so that's been kind of nice for me so I didn't have to really invest much of anything for the SD cards at this point so yeah overall this camera has been a pleasure to use and my favorite part about it is the codec which is the 10-bit 420 is what I've been using which is the H.265 HS files and it's been working out great for me and I've been getting very nice image quality with very ease of editing on my computer here you guys see back there in the background it's actually a newer iMac that has the I think A2 chip whatever chip it comes with that decodes codecs works very well with this camera so yeah I'm pretty fortunate enough to have everything work together so well with this camera and my computer and I actually have an M1 MacBook Air that does pretty well also with this camera with the HS files and has no issue editing 4k 60 whatsoever so I haven't really done much of 120 on there but 60 has no issues on the little air there so yeah pretty cool that it all works out and last but not least for this thing the sensitivity of this camera in the dark 
dark is so nice and so well that it with this lens especially paired to this 1.4 I mean I can have the most smallest amount of light and still get very decent video so as you guys saw there I had that nighttime footage there with the, of course the full moon but we were still getting plenty of light into the sensor and I'm still messing around with profiles and which ones to use since getting this camera Sony did release picture profile 11 gave us I guess cine tone colors and I've been messing around with that and it's kind of nice and I like the look of that so and also guys I forgot to mention but yeah I've done a few things here to make it easier for myself to access certain things so yeah my favorites menu I put in formatting and movie settings that way I can change that pretty quick right there and also I adjusted a few buttons here like the C3 will give me the monitor brightness you know right away so I can if I'm outside I can go to sunny weather or here I can control more brightness or less brightness just from this button here and also a few other things like here I made this button to zoom so if I click on it you guys can see I got zoom so if I go to manual focus I can just click here and then adjust my focus right on the fly so that's been very helpful honestly pretty amazing how quick I can you know set up having ease of use of certain things so and there's a bunch of other things that I did that I don't really remember what it is but I've got so used to this camera right now that you know it's kind of like I just grab it and use it for what I need it I'm still exploring obviously new options and new ways to use it but overall I've been very happy with it now with that said I think that you know it's kind of hard to say if it's worth getting this camera for anybody because let's say if you already have a Sony a3 unless you really need the slow motion I wouldn't really say that you know this camera here will like blow you out of the water better I guess what I'm trying to say is that don't expect the camera to do miracles for your content or whatever you're filming unless you know you know exactly what to expect and you know this is just a tool to make content and you're better off investing in you know filming techniques and editing even or whatever else that you know you do than in the hardware itself so yeah you know as excited as I was to upgrade that also made me realize I didn't really have to upgrade but I have been enjoying the faster frame rates of this camera to make it worthwhile so yeah I just want to point that out that a camera is only a camera and you still need the operator behind it to make it shine I guess or make it worthwhile to have something like this so and plus now with the FX3 out I mean they're pretty much identical here so you know if you're more interested in a more pro body without the EVF and you know more video oriented that might even make more sense even though the price is pretty close too so in any case guys that's kind of like my thoughts on this thing and hopefully this video here even though it's kind of a little bit somewhat inconsistent from the beginning to the end here kind of helps you out with the thoughts of the Sony a7s 3 I'm sure I missed a few things that I wanted to say but I got too distracted and wasn't able to finish this video so believe it or not I still do use my APS-C cameras here and there because they're lighter they're much easier just to grab and run with but every time I want quality or I'm on a tripod I definitely use the a7s 3 here or if I need low light definitely this is you know my first choice obviously and also I have the Webel S gimbal for this thing which pairs very nicely and I did make a video of that so if you want to check that out and also I got a few accessories that I got for this thing like the cage that I'll be releasing video here shortly if you're interested in that so stay tuned but in any case guys hopefully you enjoyed this video so if you did hit that like button and also if you want to pick up the camera for yourself I'll have some links in the description check that out also for the lens here and I'll leave you with the saying as you are the creator so get out there and create and your camera is just a tool for that so all right guys well thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one peace